Welcome, Irish fans, to the 2015-16 season of the Jack Swarbrick Show. On today's show, we'll take a look back at a very eventful spring and summer for the Notre Dame Athletic Department. We'll visit with Notre Dame football assistant head coach Mike Denbrock and Notre Dame senior All-American women's soccer player Kerry Wakaro. And we'll preview another busy week for Notre Dame sports. Now, here are your hosts, Notre Dame Vice President and Director of Athletics, Jack Swarbrick, and Notre Dame football captain, graduate, and starting linebacker, Joe Schmidt. Welcome. Welcome, Joe. Great to have you with me. Yeah, thanks for having me on. That's, uh, that's one heck of an intro that right was, there. That was, big, that was a big buildup. We are, uh, we're doing something a little different this year in addition to... Uh, to dramatically increasing the talent on the show by bringing you on. I don't know uh, about that one, but... <laughs> we're, uh, we're defying the, the long-held belief that I have a face made for radio by actually videotaping this thing, too. So we'll be able to... Uh, our fans will be able to see us do this uh, if they go on our website, in, in addition to hearing us on our affiliates. So uh, kind of a new format that'll be fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. You know, I showered this morning, which is a change for me. So um, hopefully the, the fans really enjoy that. You know, everybody here is very thankful that you <laughs> did, by the way. I've been in that locker room. So, <laughs> you know, the, in, uh, the introduction was notable because it's Captain Joe Schmidt. Yeah. Um, quite the honor. How do you, how do you feel about that? Um, well, first, it's, it's probably the most, um, the greatest honor that's ever been bestowed upon me in my entire life. When you have uh, a team like we have with so many uh, veteran, experienced senior leaders, um, upperclassmen leaders, um, vote, on, vote for you on something like that. It's, it's just, it's really, it's a, it's a dream come true for me, and it's, it's so humbling. So um, I'm, I'm really, I'm honored to be in that position, and I just hope that I can, um, I can live up to the responsibility of, of leading this team. Now, when I heard you talking about it, you'd, you'd been able to uh, talk to Dad, but I think Mom was in a, <laughs> on a plane. What, yeah. what happened when uh, she touched down and you finally had that conversation? Yeah, that wasn't a good thing. Uh, <laughs> mom, not being, mom not being able to he be the first one to hear the news was, uh, was definitely not good, but it was okay, I guess, since she was on the plane. Um, but she, uh, you know, as soon as I told her, she started crying, and I think she might have gotten a few, uh, a few hundred texts uh, from people, so she might have known, but... Um, as soon as I got her on the phone, she was, uh, she was full of tears. So it was, it was great to um, just be able to share something like that with my, with my parents. And I'm extremely close to them. And uh, it, was just, it was really a special, special moment for me. You're sharing it uh, with your family, with the news, but you're sharing it with some special people who are your fellow captains on yeah. the team. Run us through those guys. Uh, well, I mean, Matthias Farley is one of the be my best friends here. Um, he's a brother of mine. Um, and he's somebody that's been leading since the day he got here in, in one way or another. He's, he's got a unique ability to, to, to connect with people. Um, and that's just so, uh, that's so valuable for our team. And, and, he's, and he's someone that can really approach just about anybody and, and get, him, um, get him back on the, on the right track. So he's got a, a unique ability to do that. Uh, you got Sheldon Day, who's another person that's able to connect so well with people. Um, obviously, he's, they both are very talented, talented players. Uh, Nick Martin. Uh, you know him and Sheldon, two-time captains here at Notre Dame, which is extremely impressive. Um, and then Jalen Smith, which is, you know, he's one of the best football players I've ever seen, and he's come so far in how he how he sees the game, how he can lead people, and um, and it's just it's it's a it's a blessing to have him uh, as one of the linebackers that I work with every day. So um, we're all we're all uh, extremely close. Uh, it's a very tight knit group, and we can't l wait to lead this team uh, uh, on Saturday. And, 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 and how does the designation impact your approach to that? I mean, do you guys do you spend time together as a group talking about how you'll, how you'll lead the team? Yeah, yeah, so I guess it's a good question. Um, we, for already for the last uh, really year, more or less, uh, have been kind of meeting together, a small group of guys just try, you know, on occasion trying to make sure that we're, as a team, we're going in the right direction, the direction that we feel we need, uh, we need to go. Um, and there are guys that I didn't that aren't don't have a seat on their chest that are in these meetings as well. So um, I think that's what makes us so special. So I think that really the approach has been the same for all of us, and it's going to remain the same uh, regardless of whatever's going on. Um, you know, the, I only, and for, you know I can speak for myself personally. I only know one way to play the game. I only know one way to live my life, and um, it doesn't matter if I have a C or a, any other letter for that matter on my chest. I'm going to continue to do exactly what I've always done. So. I thought you were going to say that you, the only way you know how to play the game was with broken body parts. <laughs> Seriously, at, the, at this point, it feels like it. <laughs> uh, so what's the prognosis on the hand? Uh, so um, I, I, for those of you that might not know, I broke a, a small bone called your trapezium, which I had no idea existed prior to about uh, three weeks ago when I broke it. Um, I broke it in a, in a, in a drill, and um, 
I hardly even knew I broke my hand. It's only because I've broken my hands like 10 times now that um, I'm aware, which is probably why you, <laughs> you, you, uh, you're saying it's, it's almost the only way I know to play the game. Um, but I don't even feel it at this point, and, and it should be off here uh, shortly. And um, we'll see if we can get some, uh, some cool stuff on it uh, for the game. Uh, we got, we got, hopefully have a little surprise for the fans. Ah, yeah. Well, we'll look forward to that. And let the record show. I saw you make a pick yesterday at practice with it on, so yeah. you can you you can still catch with it. I can, I can. I have all my fingers, and um, you'd be surprised. You really don't need your thumb to catch footballs, for that matter. So, well, I'll, I'll point that out to the wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, they probably won't like me for that comment. And uh, closing out the captain discussion, I gotta I gotta give a little credit to my hometown here. We got two Indianapolis captains, <laughs> I know. and this is this is four years with a Martin as captain of the Notre Dame football team. Pretty remarkable yeah I mean the, the Martin family though is is one of the best families I've ever met and you can just from meeting his parents and, and the rest of his family you, you just know that uh, there's something unique and special about them and and I guess yeah it is a huge a huge W for, for the state here so um, we've taken a lot of flack for it the guys from the other states so <laughs> yeah three from the state two from Indianapolis it's, yeah uh, that's pretty darn good yeah okay so let me ask a really insightful penetrating question are we ready <laughs> um, I believe we are. I believe we are. Uh, you know, we have we have two more days here of a uh, of of less intensity um, with our preparation. We've got uh, you know perfect practice Thursday, which is today, and then f uh, focus Friday tomorrow. So uh, still some things we want to iron out, um, but uh, I think we're very familiar with this opponent. Um, you know, Texas has a great team, and uh, they have a, you know they have a lot of ways of stressing the defense. Um, so I'm, I, think we, I think we are ready, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next two days of prep. First games are always full of unknowns. It feels like we maybe know a little less about what Texas is going to do because they've indicated they've made a lot of changes to offense, especially going right. to a high-tempo offense. Which, which teams are going to? Everybody does now. Like going to bring to it's, us. It's yeah. a college football game yeah. at this point. So. Yeah. So uh, does that make the preparation more challenging, that, that there is so much you can't be sure about until those first couple of series get underway? Yeah, you know, it's, the first games are always so different. Um, and, uh, you know, especially with a team like, with, with a team like Texas this year, um, a lot of turnover. Uh, you, know, some, you know, some of their key players are gone. You know, Jackson Shipley was, was one of the key players in that offense, and now, you, and now he's gone. So you're wondering who's going to fill these roles, and you can really only guess, and, and they, you know, they're not going to tell you. So um, there is a certain element of just waiting and seeing. Um, but, you know, I think we have a really good idea, and, and that's what the coaches are paid, paid well to do. You know, Coach Van Gord has come up with a, a you know, great plan for what he thinks they're going to do. And, and, but in the end of the day, they're going to come out here, they're going to run whatever they're going to run. And um, as a defense and as a team, for that matter, our offense included, you have to just be ready conceptually to understand whatever they're trying to do to attack you and then, and then be ready to defend. So um, I think, I, think I'm, I feel prepared. And, um, but that's, the, that's always the challenge about first games. And, and, that's, and that's why you always wonder, though, why, um, you know, who, who comes up with these schedules here at, at Notre Dame? Um, you know, I Jack, know. I, I don't know. We I don't know. We gotta find that guy. We gotta find that guy, though. And I'm, I'm kidding. I love playing Texas. It's a great first game, but I gotta, I gotta poke a little fun at you there. Yeah, we're, there's, this year is no short, has no shortage of challenge, uh, challenges. And uh, <laughs> you know, it seemed, it seemed rational when I did it seven <laughs> years ago and made the schedule, but, uh, but it evolves. Listen, when we get Coach Denbrock in here in a future segment, I want you to repeat that line about the coaches being really well paid to do what they do. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll make sure I, uh, I throw that one back in there, and I'll see if. Uh, I don't have a few gassers after my Thursday practice today, so <laughs> gotta wash um, my mouth. <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a night game. We're opening with a night game. What's any difference in approach? Do you prefer one to another? The night atmosphere. Um, I, I hesitate to say I prefer one to the other, um, but I do love night games. Um, there's something about you know playing under the lights in Notre Dame Stadium. Um, you have all day and. Uh, Little little secret, we can take naps at some point during the day. I'm a huge nap guy, uh, so we get we you know we get a few hours just to kind of be with our be with our, ourselves on Saturdays. But we also we you know we have a great a great program really for the full Saturday that Coach Kelly's put together, and I think um, I think the staff really understands how best to prepare the guys throughout the day. Um, so I think it, it it really you know really gets us in the right mindset and, and gets our bodies right for for the game. So. Um, I'm excited. I love night games, and I cannot wait uh, for 7:30. It's it's. I've had butterflies for like four days. <laughs> well, we all have. We can't we we can't wait to get going. How would you characterize camp this year? Competitive. 
it's, if there's one word, it's got to be competitive. And, and that, I think that stems from, I mean, look at, you got to look at how many, how many guys have played here now. Um, and, and how, and for us on the defensive side, it's such a, it's a hassle dealing with all the, the all of those guys that are weapons on offense. But at the same time, there are so many guys on defense that can play. So, um, every single snap matters, every single play matters. And, um, and that was what camp was all about. So we really did a good job, though, of balancing that competitive, you know, the competitiveness with um, the need to come together in team chemistry. So um, I think that Coach Kelly brought in, you know, he brought in some really, really good speakers from, from outside. You know, we had, we had the program come, um, which was great. Marcus Luttrell, Joel Pomeri. Um, so I think that the whole experience of camp really brought the team together, but at the same time really hard, uh, you know, got this competitive competitiveness and um, and just, it, was, it, was, it was a tough and rugged camp, so I really enjoyed it. You know, one of the reasons it's so competitive at linebacker is the return of a guy I know you love seeing out there oh running around as much as, as much as I do. I don't, I don't know that, uh, that I felt better about a moment than, than seeing Jared Grace out there going full speed. I don't think I did either. And, and, and you know, you hit it on the head. He's, he's, one, of my, he's one of my closest friends. Uh, he has been since we both got here, and uh, he lives about seven feet away from me in, in our house. Um, and it's... And it's just great to, to see him back out there healthy because, um, you know, he was he was such a, a huge supporter of mine when when I was injured. And, and it really, I, you know, I, did, I tried to do everything I could when he was. And so just for us both to be out there, it, it's um, it's re it's really uh, it's fulfilling. And, and um, every time he's out there, he makes a play. I feel like it's, I feel like it's me making a play. And he, he says the same thing about me. So uh, we're extremely close. And and I'm so happy that he's healthy. Yeah, it's great to have him back. And it gives us. It gives us two guys who really have a, a a very detailed understanding of the defense. Oh yeah. Um, how challenging is it to sort of run the defense on the field? Because there's a lot going on with the way uh, BVG runs this thing. You really, you know, there is a lot going on, and it's an NFL scheme. So um, I don't think, you know, for the normal fan, I don't think they really understand how much goes on just from in one play. You know, there's, you know, you you, you get to the line of scrimmage. Um, actually, sorry, let's just start from the play before. You, somebody makes a tackle, you turn to the sideline, you get the personnel that the, uh, the opposing team is in, so then that forms your first thought process of, okay, here's the personnel. The down and distance is, this, is at the same time, so you're trying to think, okay, situationally, what are they going to try to do to attack us? So then you're thinking, okay, maybe they're in 11, 21, 12 personnel, which is one back, two tight ends, or, or whatever it is that they're in. Um, so then from that point, you get, you get the call, and, you, and, and whatever call it is, there are certain checks that go along with that call. And I'm, you know, it could be one check, there could be seven checks. Um, and so you kind of got, you kind of have to see once they, that now the offense has broken their huddle or they're on the line of scrimmage. And now you have to see, okay, this is what the offense is doing. What, which one of these seven checks do I have to make? Or how many of these seven checks do I have to make? And then you have to communicate that from defensive line to linebacker, linebacker to secondary, secondary to defensive lineman, and, and everyone has to be cohesive. And if someone sees the game differently, and that's why I, you know, earlier I mentioned Jalen and I seeing the game um, the same is so important. If someone sees it differently, you're not going to make the right check, and guys are going to be doing different things, and that's when big plays happen. So um, that's why Jarrett and, 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 and I and, and Niles and all the middle linebackers, linebackers in general, um, are, are, you know, have to make sure that we understand the game so well uh, because you need to be able to, you know, kind of orchestrate all of that going on, and and there's a lot there uh, to it. So, and in addition to my defective gene pool, that explains why I never played linebacker. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think you could have done it. That's, I think. That is really complicated. Okay, <laughs> we're going to take a break right now, and uh, when we come back, we'll have the first of our guests. I'm really excited. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> 